Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes taking care of business. The man who rules the world breaks in a brand new partner to help him take care of business in this action-packed all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes taking care of business at paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. A couple of weeks ago, I got a chance to take a look at 2011's Green Lantern. Now, this version of Green Lantern is lambasted by many comic fans as one of the worst superhero films to be made. And I'd have to agree that this is a very terrible superhero film, and it's a terrible superhero film due to the poor execution of concept by Greg Berlanti. Now, your Greg Berlanti really does not understand the Hal Jordan character, nor does he understand the vastness of the world of Green Lantern in the DC Universe. And because he doesn't understand the vastness of the Green Lantern lore in the DC Universe, what he does with this film is try to give us a Cliff Notes version as a way to introduce us to the character, and this Cliff Notes version really does not give us that whole epic feel that a Green Lantern movie should have. The biggest problem with this film is that it tries to cram so much into under two hours, and in its attempts to try to cram so much in under two hours, we really don't get a good sense of the character, nor do we get a world that is built that shows us how big and vast the Green Lantern core is. No, what we get here is an extremely shallow version of the whole Green Lantern mythology, and that version of the Green Lantern mythology does not really allow us to connect with the character or care about the character. Now, what compounds this poor execution is the complete miscasting of Ryan Reynolds as Hal Jordan. Now, Ryan Reynolds is fantastic as Deadpool and really gets that character, but his Hal Jordan is a shallow character with no real personality, no real voice, and you really can't connect with him due to the way he's poorly written. You want to go out here and root for him as a hero, but they never really give you any sort of sense of why we should see him as a hero. Some, In some ways, they try to copy the Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark, and then in other ways, they're trying to make him a Han Solo type character. So we really never get a sense of why Hal Jordan is unique. We never get a sense of why Hal Jordan is distinct, and we never get a sense of his personality or his voice at all. Instead, what we get is a very bland and generic character that Ryan Reynolds struggles with. And I really, again, can't blame Ryan Reynolds but so much because he, this is not the role for him. This is Berlanti trying to cast somebody in a role that is not a good fit. And I really believe Nathan Fillion would have done a better job as Hal Jordan, and he probably would have done a better job had he been given a much be better script. Because the script here, again, is very shallow and one-dimensional, and the presentation of Hal Jordan becoming Green Lantern really never gives us a reason to care about why he got this ring and what he plans to do with this ring. Everything after he gets the ring just happens kind of automatically and we're taken to Owo where he gets training and that's where, where we start to see problems because there's no real context with time and then we get to see this big threat as related to the parallax but none of this stuff really comes together in an organic fashion that makes you really care about this hero and makes you connect with his story. So everything just kind of really just rush is rushed through as related to the story. So you really don't get any sense of personality again, voice, and you don't get any sort of depth and layers that a movie like Green Lantern should have. I mean, everything is about, oh, the parallax is coming and we need somebody to go out here and fight the parallax. And that's not really much of a story because this it doesn't really give you that villain to really love to hate. It's just an entity that's there, and we're supposed to just go out here 
and not and want to see this entity destroyed because we're told it's evil. And that's another big problem with the Green Lantern movie is that it's really passive and for most of the movie it tells us and it doesn't show us and when you're telling people you're not going to have a strong impact on them. I mean in film you have to show with pictures you can't tell people and that was one of the other big problems with the Green Lantern movie was it kept telling me oh Hal Jordan is the one who should have the ring it was telling me how bad the parallax was but it didn't do a good job of just showing us the threats or showing us a hero or showing us anything everything here was presented in an extremely passive fashion and that was probably because they wanted to try to rush so much into one movie because they wanted to get to the sequel where they would have Hal Jordan take on Sinestro. So they were not really focusing on trying to develop the story for one movie. They were thinking franchise, and that's a major mistake. When you're out here doing films or comics or novels, the thing you want to do is focus on the story you have right in front of you and you want to focus on making the story you're producing the best it can be don't worry about the sequel if your story is good people will demand a sequel and it, that you don't have to worry about going out here and writing the second story before you've written the first that is a mistake many writers start making is oh I'm gonna write the sequel I'm gonna come up with a sequel no, you want to write the first story and make it the best it can be, and you want that story to stand alone on its own without any sort of sequel, because what that does is it makes it where you put it in your mind where you have to try to top yourself, and that's what happened here with Green Lantern screenplay. They started writing the first, second one before they wrote the first, and the whole thing is that the first one suffered due to again weak character development weak writing and weak storytelling and them trying to ram so much of Green Lantern's lore into one story when they could have easily just did a story about Hal Jordan finding the ring Hal Jordan going out here and taking on a menace of some sort and then go further on into after he defeats the menace then goes on to Oa and finds out a little bit more about the Green Lantern Corps. They could have easily done a smaller and simpler and more compact film with richer character development, but instead Greg Berlanti wanted to try to rush and ram this one through in the hopes of creating a big world like a Green Lantern um, to be like Star Wars, but what happened is because he did so much in one film, it just became a done and one front film and that again that's all due to Greg Berlanti's poor execution but this is par for the course for Greg Berlanti because whenever he's involved with DC heroes we don't really get really good execution we don't really get good character development and we really don't get good execution of concepts and stories and that was shown to us with his arrow with his legends of tomorrow and with Supergirl, where in all of those shows, it suffered due to him pushing so much identity politics over really well-crafted storytelling. And here, he doesn't really focus on storytelling. He just tries to just force things instead of letting them flow organically. Because there was a lot of promise with the whole thing, with the whole premise of Green Lantern, but it suffered due to them not going out here and learning how to write dialogue, knowing how to develop characters, or how to put together a well a story that could make you care. So I look at Green Lantern as one of DC's most disappointing failures because had they gotten the right production team, the right director, and cast the right actor, they might have had a future classic on their hands. All the elements were there to make a Green Lantern movie. Unfortunately, the people they put in charge of it, they just didn't know what they were doing. And as a result, we got one of the worst superhero movies since 2004's Catwoman. 
and a poor again a poorly executed film that was the result of trying to rush to compete with the MCU and showing that your DC still has a lot to learn about superheroes and making superhero movies and I believe that again they need to stop thinking about franchise and they need to stop thinking about things like that and just focus on putting together one great story featuring a character and feature and a great story that gets us into that character's history and lore. Now if you want to see me do more comic movie review videos like this you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to pick up some of my SJS Direct publications featuring black heroes and heroines like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Hayes series, and the books of the Spistarella trilogy, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBook store, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Hayes, the man with nothing to lose, the man who rules the world, runs with the irresistible force of a man with nothing to lose in this action-packed all-new John Hayes series adventure. Get the regular and variant editions of John Hayes, the man with nothing to lose on Amazon.com.